So in step four, they want us to double check the result. Now, why is this important? So in the days of the Mercury program, computers were not exactly new, but they were being used for these kind of intense mathematical computations for some of the first times. Um, you had teams of coders, um, not the kind of computer coding that we're used to think about today, but you know, very old fashioned brute force kind of coding with punch cards that you might not even know about. And because this was a fairly new technology, a lot of people didn't really trust the values. And if you're an astronaut, like um, one of Ohio's own John Glenn, who was actually the astronaut that was in the capsule that Katherine Johnson helped calculate orbits for, um, you don't want to put your life on the line for a computer that might have a, a computer code that might have a bug in it. Um, nowadays, a lot of times, the worst that can happen with a computer bug is your code takes too long to run or it crashes. But when you're dealing with an astronaut, these are people's lives. This is the safety of the crew. This is making sure you get there quick enough. You want to be accurate. So John Glenn actually asked NASA personally to make sure that their best you know, mathematicians were calculating the orbits in order to get back into Earth properly and be picked up on time. And when he asked for the best, they delivered the best. And Katherine Johnson was up there front and center making some of these calculations. So we're going to try something similar to what she did and check the results um, using uh, some theoretical um, equations. So we measured from the program that the ideal velocity in the y direction was about 45. We also know that the velocity along x was 0. So that means the total velocity is only the velocity in y. And because of that, I'm going to just simply erase this y and just simply call the velocity v instead of v sub y. It'll simplify our equations later, and it makes sense because v sub x was 0. We also have from the code that I want to write down v, we'll call this v too big. When it just went way too far off the screen, it was at 60. That was one of the first values we tried. And then I'll say something like v too small. Um, is what we started with, the default value, which was 30. Now, why is this the case? Let's try to understand why v of 60 is too big and why v of 30 is too small and why v of 45 is just right. And to do that, we can actually use Newton's equations. So Newton's most famous equation and possibly the most famous physics equation in existence is simply f equals mass times acceleration, where this f is the sum of all the forces on an object. This m is the mass of that object. And this a is the acceleration that the object is undergoing. Now, in this case, we have an astronaut in some capsule in orbit. So we know the only force acting on this is the force due to gravity. So we're going to say that this f, because of gravity, um, and that is given by the equation g m, this m is the mass of the Earth, this m is the mass of the capsule, over the radius that you're orbiting at squared. So this radius is how far away the astronaut's capsule is from the center of the Earth. It is not the same as the radius of the Earth, it's a little bit bigger. It's not that much bigger, but we want to keep them as distinct concepts in our head. So we're just going to call this one r. Now, what happens on the right-hand side of this equation? So on the right-hand side of this equation, we can just simply copy down the m. And then we ask ourselves what a is. a is the acceleration of any kind of object that's either in uniform circular motion or instantaneously along its path feels like it's in uniform circular motion. So what do I mean by that in more detail? So if we first pretend we're just in a circle, and I cannot draw a perfect circle, so let's pretend that is a perfect circle. And if you're right here, your radius, because of what a circle is, we'll make this capital R just to make it different from this R, is always the same at any point, because that's the definition of a circle. But 
if you're following along some different trajectory, and let's say you're moving along some path that looks kind of like this, right? Then you can section off some portion of this, build the circle with one side given by that, and this is like some circle, and they can do that here again, where this is approximately a circle, and then one can do it out here and so on. And what we're calling here is from the center of these circles to their edges is what I'm going to call R sub C for the radius of the curvature. Here I drew these two RCs as the same, but that radius of curvature can be different along different parts of the path. This is just a simplification. So we draw a circle where one side of the circle is the curve, and then you can build a circle around that, and they can do it in another location, and they get different radii of curvature. So anything undergoing motion like this, or like this, um, is given by the velocity of the object squared over that radius of curvature. Okay, what's important to note here is that this r and this r don't need to be the same thing. They represent two different concepts. As a reminder, here again we're talking about the radius of the astronaut's capsule from the center of the Earth, which is just a circle. Um, and here we're talking about the radius of curvature of an object. Now, in our code you'll recall that we wanted something that looked pretty circular in orbit. So it turns out that this radius of curvature is analogous to the same radius that you would get in a circle. But we're just keeping this here for generality. All right, so what do we do? We want to, again, understand in the context of our code why 45 was good, why 60 is too big, and why 30 is too small. So we're going to clean up this equation a little bit, and we're going to make a relationship between the radius of the curvature and the radius of the orbit and we're going to try plugging in some values and see how they compare to each other. So to start out, we notice that there's an m on both sides, so it's simple enough to just cancel them out. And if you want to see more explicitly, what I did was I divided both sides by m. And there's already a line here. And then I cancel the top and the bottom. So that gets rid of the little mass. So now our equations no longer care about the mass of the capsule. And what we have here is g m over r squared is equal to v squared over r sub c. Now, again, we want to solve and relate these two radii to each other. So I'm going to do something that's somewhat of a two-step process. I'm going to multiply both sides by r c. Put this dot just to remember that we're multiplying. And in the same step, I'm going to divide both sides by gm. Now, what we notice is that the gms on this side cancel, and the rcs on this side cancel. And what we're left with is something that looks like rc over r squared is equal to v squared over g. Okay, and then the last step, I'll just multiply both sides by r squared just to get them on different sides of the equal sign. And then on the left hand side, these cancel. And then the final result we get is that rc is equal to v squared r squared over gm. Okay, now we can ask ourselves how these two quantities are related to each other, and we have the answer that RC is given by this equation. We also know the values that we care about here. Um, we know the value of G used in the code, and we know the value of M. So I will go to the code, and we see that M is 1,000, and G is 100. So what I'm going to do, just so it's easier to see, is I'm going to write these on the side, and then I'm going to go back to my black screen. If you can't read it now, it's okay. You should be able to read it momentarily. OK, 
Okay. Are there any other values we need from here? Well, we're trying to figure out what RC is. We want the radius of their orbit. That's the other value we need. So we need this little r, which the code here says is the initial position of the Mercury capsule. Um, so here we need to do a little bit of math, actually. We know that the x-coordinate for the Earth is 375. So actually, let me go over here and write it down. So x sub e for the x-coordinate of the Earth is 375. And we know that the radius of the Earth, I'm going to make this r sub e, is equal to 50. And we know from the code that the x position, actually you can see it right around here, that the position of the Mercury capsule starts out along x at 430. So I'm just going to say x, and I'm just going to call this regular x, equals 430. So if we want to figure out the distance um, from the capsule initially to the center of the Earth, we can use x minus x sub e. Um, and the reason we can do that is there's no change in the y direction. We can treat this somewhat as a one-dimensional problem because the capsule starts out at the same y position as the center of the Earth, but the x position is different. So if I plug in these values, we get 430 minus 375, and that ends up being 55. Right? So this r that we care about here is actually going to be 55. Now all, this, all of these are known quantities. So let's say now r sub c is equal to, I'm going to leave out the v squared for now. We're going to say like um, v squared. We're going to say 55 squared over 1,000 times 100 is 100,000. Now we have an equation that relates the radius of curvature of your orbit to the velocity that the object in orbit is moving at. Um, and I've also erased some space just so we have more, I erased some content just to have more space to write down um, the equations we need to do now. So this will help us understand why v of 60 is too big and why v of 30 is too small. So let's start simple. First, we want to try taking this equation and see what happens when we plug in um, 60. So let's try the first case, which I'll just label case 1, and that's going to be for v of 60. So we're going to say 60 squared times 55 squared divided by 100,000. Um, and there are a lot of different ways you can calculate this. Um, because we have advantages that Katherine Johnson didn't have when she was working out these equations, we'll just go ahead and use an online calculator. One common one is called Desmos, and I have it here in another window, and I'll take you to it now. So Desmos is really neat. It's completely free. And you can graph functions that might be important for some of your other classes. But right now, we just want to do some simple algebra on it. So if I go to Desmos, I will be greeted to a window that looks like this. And on the first line, I can start inputting my math. So the first thing I want to do is 60. And we want to square it. So in order to do squaring, we want to press the Shift key on our computer and press the number 6. And that gives you that little up arrow thing that we call a caret. And then that puts us in the exponent of the number. So I can write 2 for square. And in order to get down out of here, we can just simply use the right arrow when your keyboard has the up, down, left, right. Just press the right arrow once, and then you go back down to normal levels. And then you want to say times, which is shift 8, and you get the multiplication dot. Again, we're going to do 55 squared, come back down. And to divide, we just want to press the slash key. Um, and this looks weird because right now, 
the division is only under the 55 squared. And if you look at our equation, it's under everything. Because of the rules of math and because the calculator understands what we mean by this, the calculator, this Desmos, recognizes that the 60 squared here is also in the numerator. Okay? And then we can see what the result here is, and we find out that the radius of curvature is, we'll round it, 108.9. All right. So you might remember from some minutes ago when we were launching the rocket and we started out with a velocity of 60 in the y direction that we had some path where it started out near the center of the earth and then it launched out and it went way out here this way somewhere and just kept going. Um, that tells us that the radius of curvature for that orbit was significantly larger than the radius of curvature of the earth. Remember the earth was 50 um, and this is over twice that. This is 108.9. Now let's try the second case, where we have the velocity of something too small, where all this equation looks exactly the same, except now instead of 60, I have 30. And the rest we can copy over. Okay. Fortunately, Desmos and most of these other online calculators don't require us to go back in and delete everything. I can just instead replace 60 here by clicking to the right side of the 6, backspace, and put 30 instead. And now it gave me an answer which is 27.2, where we round it. Again, remember 27.2 is a lot smaller than 50, and you will remember that when we started out and we said with the initial value of 30, well, if Earth here, if Earth was right here, I'll just call that Earth, and then our spaceship was here, it ended up doing something like this, where it just crashed in immediately. It could barely move anywhere. And that's because the radius of curvature for this orbit was really close to Earth and so small that it couldn't actually stay in any kind of orbit. So let's try a third case. The third case is the one that looked like it worked best based on the numbers we tried. And according to Desmos, this gives us 61.2. Now, this is a lot closer than we were before. And we can ask ourselves, how does this actually compare with both the radius of the Earth, which is 50, and the radius of the astronaut's orbit, which we said before is 55, which we plugged in here. So in case one, we're much greater than, we're over twice as big as 50 and about twice as big as 55. And that's why we were able to go in an orbit that if you started out with Earth, it looked something like this, and then just kept going on and on and on and on out here and just didn't close. Um, why in the second case, we started out around here and then we immediately crashed into Earth because the radius of curvature was much too small. And then in here we had something that looked fairly normal where we were following some path that did something like this on a closed loop. If we want to solve for this more precisely, the proper thing to do would be to take the radius of your orbit and set that equal to the radius of curvature. And we could actually do that all the way at this step. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to erase a lot of these numbers and then we're just going to start back here from f equals ma and we're going to plug in some values and try to figure out what the right velocity is in order to get the astronaut in orbit.